Welcome back to Open Line. Talking mm -hmm. with Cindy Shapton, uh, garden consultant, master gardener. Yes. Now, see again, uh, somebody who knows as little as I do, mm -hmm. um, I, I, that sounds really impressive, but I don't know what that means. How are you qualified to be a master gardener? Well, master gardening program is, is you know, it's out of the University of Tennessee. It comes from there, and, and it's a wonderful program, especially if you want to learn about gardening, because it, it, it'll cover you know a lot of different aspects of gardening for everything from your lawn to small fruits to vegetables to herbs to um, perennials and woody you know woody shrubs and trees and so it covers a little bit of everything and it usually is about 12 week course and a lot of times it's in the winter time when is a, which is a great time but um, and you can just sign up through your local ag extension agents and uh, Davidson County has a program, Williamson County, almost all the counties have a program, and you can just call and get the information and sign up. And, and, and then you're officially a master gardener? Well, then you have to work. You have to volunteer for, um, somebody's calling in. <laughs> 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 you have to volunteer. <laughs> um, locally, there, we have different projects, and you volunteer, and then for 40 hours the first year after you get your certificate, and then you, um, excuse me, and then after you do that, then you can actually, um, after you volunteer for 40 hours, and that's basically your learning. So you go work different places, and you're kind of apprenticing. They call, you're called an intern for 40 hours. So you get out there, and you actually take all the knowledge that you've um, learned, you know, that you've acquired, and then you put it to use um, in some kind of a, usually a community venue of helping, you know, in some kind of volunteer capacity and then after that every year they just ask you you know give back 20 25 hours to keep your status but once you have that you can always go back and audit classes so if there's a class you you know you want to learn more about or you've forgotten or you want to you know check it out again you can always go back after that and audit so it's very interesting now when it comes to f the frost the first frost of the year yes generally speaking when does that happen and how should people be planning around that right now okay well the first frost is generally um, October around October 15th and what that means is um, any of your warm season crops like tomatoes green beans okra any of those kind of things peppers if they get frosted it usually kills the plant and they're finished now you can extend those crops sometimes with row covers. It's really easy. It's simple thermal blanket that's usually made out of some kind of spun polyester that you could buy at your local garden center. And, um, and that is like a blanket that will you know, extend your degrees about four degrees to six degrees, maybe eight if you get a really thick one. And so you can kind of lay that over and cover things up. And you can, you know, you might have a light frost and then it might not frost again until a week later, so it just extends your your crops. If you just can't say goodbye, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us have problems with that. Right, and that's interesting. So October fifteenth is generally speaking when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're going to it's going to happen around mid October, every year. And and then do you transition you transition into other stuff at that point, or it just kind of well, at that point now we have our greens that are growing, our beets, radishes, greens, lettuces, and they're usually, you know, we've got them growing pretty good. Maybe they're up, you know, we're harvesting, we're in the harvesting phase. And so those are cool season crops and they can take a few light frosts and it doesn't really affect them. And sometimes it makes them better, better flavor. I think kale after it gets a little light frost is better flavored. And so, um, so then you can, um, and then you can extend those as well by using row covers. And a lot of times you can keep them going most of the winter here. Row covers, what are row I mean, where do you get those? And, and, your, and garden I guess you kind of, your garden center. Your garden center, and they'll actually increase the temperature about eight degrees? Well, it's like a blanket. If you were putting a blanket on yourself, mm -hmm. it, it's warmer underneath the blanket. Okay. So it's the same it's the same theory. So you just get them and you cover, you know, you have to cover them. You can't let the air in, so you have to totally cover, you know, and so you'll put something, you know, bricks, rocks, boards, whatever you have, you know, to um, hold it down the sides. And so you create a warm atmosphere inside and they have little tiny holes in them. So they still get sunshine. They still get the rains. So it's it's pretty much a perfect setup for for me. <laughs> I like it because I you know I don't you know and then you have poly tunnels which is just you can use like PVC pipe and bend it and you know put it into the ground or a raised bed and then you can put actually clear plastic over top 
and that makes like a mini greenhouse and you can keep things going. The only thing about that is if it gets really warm outside, the sun's out, you have to make sure you vent it because it'll get really hot. You could get o overly hot yes. in there. And so for me, that's just a little more work. So right. I kind of go with the row covers as long as I can, you know, and, and then if I have to, I'll go to the poly cover, you know, a little later. But I try to get by because I'm, you know, I just, I want to be able to maybe go away for the day and not remember, you know, not forget when I get somewhere, oh, I forgot to vent my polytunnel. Now, we had a caller a moment ago who wanted to ask about the Master Gardener classes. How do you sign up? Well, you just call the Ag Extensions, you know, Williamson County Ag Extension or Davidson County, you know, whatever county you're in, and you just ask them when their next program starts. And if they haven't started sign up yet, they'll put you on a list. And then as it gets closer to the time, they'll send you an email or call you or let you know you know, when it's time. In Williamson County, we usually do start in January. And one year we'll do evening classes, and one year we do morning classes. That way, more of the population, general population, can maybe make the classes. So now you brought these herbs. Is this primarily what you grow? Or do you, are you growing tomatoes? Are you growing, yes. what, 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 what are you growing this time of year and just year round? I grow everything Everything, see, that's great. That's yeah, great. I like food. Thing. I like kitchen gardening. So I like, um, I like to be able to run out to my garden and get fresh food. And I like to eat it seasonally. So, um, you know, so these are things that I still have. But a lot of these are tender. And once we get a frost, they will be no more. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, now I'm looking at things like what can I dry? What can I put up? What can I preserve? And just simple things like you might not think about, like marigolds, for instance. Um, they have an insecticidal property to them. And so I usually dry them. And believe it or not, I add it to my chicken bedding in okay. my chicken coop. A lot of people now have chickens. <laughs> it's real big here in Davidson County. Okay. <laughs> you don't right. have chickens? No, I don't have chickens. No. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> a lot if of people, I did, though, I should have these. I should get these marigolds. Well, I'm just saying just about every, uh, lots of plants. I try to grow plants that have uses that I mean, that I can use in different ways, and I always find ways that I can. And so this is something I plant in my garden to help keep insects away from my plants. It's an organic companion planting you know, type plant, and then I'll dry them this time of year because once it frosts, they'll die. So I'll dry them, and then I'll add them to my chicken bedding. And you can, you know, they have a smell to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, and they kind of, they're a natural bug the, deterrent. So these, all right, so these are, I mean, I think that is interesting. You could, you could grow these in the garden and it would be a natural insect repellent. Uh -huh. I so that's a great them, thing. Yeah, I usually grow them around it. It helps to keep the nematodes out of the soil, helps to keep insects away. And so I always grow them around my garden, and then I try to use them again. So I'll dry them, and then I'll, you know, crumble them all up and put them in my chicken, mm -hmm. my, chi <laughs> my nesting Good. boxes. Like, <laughs> everybody's doing it. I mean, come on. Everybody has everybody. that. Sure they do. Yeah. All right, what else do you have? I'm interested in this. What, what else do you have right. here? All right, well, we talked about the lemon basil. There's oh, many great. different kinds, but right. lemon is a wonderful. Now, um, chocolate mint. Are you aware of? Have you ever had chocolate mint before? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Let's well, ch check I don't that think out. I have. Oh wow! Yeah, it smells like chocolate. <laughs> it does. So this is the perfect That's time right. of year to pick this, put it in small bouquets, and hang it upside down inside the house, and out of direct sunlight. It's real simple. I use a clothing, you know, like a clothes drying rack, those wooden clothes drying racks. Simple. And then I take rubber bands, I hang these up in little bunches, I dry them, and as soon as they're brittle, then I just, you know, I just simply take the leaves off put them in a jar, put them in the cupboard, label it, <laughs> and then you've got great tea for the winter. So that would be a, a kind of a chocolatey tea? Mm-hmm, minty. Fascinating. A minty, okay, Yeah, that's it's great. a peppermint, it, it, and it's very good if you're having like a upset tummy, you know, or, um, or you want to, um, maybe your appetite's not, you know, doing so great, and this will help to stimulate your appetite, and uh, so it has lots of, and it's just a good flavorful pleasant tea to have on a cold winter day. Is there actually chocolate in there? I mean, how, how does it get that? I mean, it smells just like chocolate. It does. It's just the chemical makeup of the plant. It's amazing. Yes. And there's all kinds of mints. There's, you know, the plain peppermint, spearmint. There's um, lemon mint, ginger mint, orange mint. And they all have a little bit of a flavor 
It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So these are things you want to do this time of year because once it frosts, this will die back to the ground until next year. So you want to take advantage of that and get in the rest of your herbs that you want to dry this year. Um, this is a very fascinating plant. It's called um, it's called a toothache plant, and it's kind of gotten a little bit wilty um, after I picked it. But this is um, it actually. It's a beautiful plant to have in your garden. You can see these beautiful little, if you can imagine it, <laughs> these little gumdrop blooms on it. And it actually is used to, um, it will help with the toothache. And, um, and it's becoming very posh in the, with the chefs now. And they take these and they actually, it's Szechuan buttons they call them. And they'll actually cook these with hot dishes, the, the, the actual, they'll dry these, the mm -hmm. flowers, and then they use them small amounts of them in their cooking, especially okay. with hot dishes. And it's like this, it, it's a, it gives you kind of an effervescent kind of a, you know, flavor and um, reaction in your mouth. So, which actually numb, will numb a toothache. So if you have a toothache, you can actually, um, you know, chew on a leaf or actually stick it between your tooth and, and, and cheek, just a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and um, and if you eat of some of it, it actually will taste kind of like a, what you'd expect, like an Elka seltzer or or a fizzy drink. It'll actually fizz. So a lot of people put these in drinks. You'll see, and bartenders are using them now. They'll put them in your drinks and make it. You know, they'll rub the edge of your glasses before they put their um, their alcoholic drink in there. Really, they'll do that with this. Yes. And, and is it cooked or something? No, or just, no, it's not. They'll just, just take raw, this and, and they'll they rub. That. They'll rub the, the rim of the glass. Okay. And then when you drink from it, you'll get this little effervescent, wow, and then you get the the flavor of whatever you're drinking. And and this would also help a toothache. Yes. If you the leaves or the or you the you just flowers. put it in your mouth if your tooth hurt. Uh huh. And you just uh -huh. leave it there. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's fascinating. Isn't that it? is fascinating. Yes. Yeah. And I bet you know, in in some of the nicer restaurants now, it's it's so kind of in to have organic, homegrown stuff. This is the kind of thing that, that yes. you find. Yes. Yes. And, and what's this called again? What is this? It's um, called the toothache plant. The toothache plant. Okay. Splenanthus. Splenanthus. Is the, yes, okay. that's the. That's the technical name. The, yeah, the technical name. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. And uh, but the leaves are used. They'll put them in salads now, and so. And they say, too, that if you have issues with um, yeast, everybody has yeast, you just don't know how much, you know, um, candida in your system, that it actually helps to fight that. So a lot of people eat these on a regular basis in their salads and whatnot. Really? Yes. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, we're going to take a break. Yes. If you want to call, free gardening advice. Where else can you get that? Where else can you get free gardening advice? So give us a call. Uh, we'll take a break. Be back right after this.